Hey friends, welcome back to the Krusty Cranks TV lure painting tutorials. All right, so today we're going to be working on CC005. This is the Krusty Orange Tiger. And um, first off, I want to say if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and give us a like if you like these videos. And if you want to learn more about lure making and lure painting, um... I'm kind of a beginner, been doing this for about a year now and just been um, trying to improve my skills and share with people that want to get into making lures. So um, let's get right into this one. Okay, today we're doing the Krusty Tiger, Krusty Orange Tiger, and the colors we're using today is going to be the titanium white now, i switched to the titanium white i was using uh createx the opaque white just found it to be way too chalky and, and dry my tips up all the time so um i switched off to uh to try this titanium now i was using the u.s um art supply white it works really really good too but i've seen other painters using the titanium white so i thought i'd give it a try and it seems to be flowing really really well um because we always prime our baits up most of the time with white or black or another color um you know it's important that you have a good flow and get your get your baits because a lot of times well i'll be doing two or three baits for a customer and um you know it helps me to get that titanium good flow out of that titanium and then that way I can get right on to painting my baits and um, it's got a little bit of a gloss to it which I think helps the colors pop out a little more so I'm really liking it um, so today we're going to talk about uh, just different types of stencils that I use and the ways I put them on I'm going to do one of my stencils uh, a couple of my stencils and um, we're going to um, probably use other stencils but I'll just explain to you kind of some of the stencils I use um, so first off I'm going to use this what they call glitter foil I guess it is I don't know it's got a bunch of different names um, you can get it at the hobby store I think I ordered it online I got a whole row of it and the stuff will last me forever um, and I kind of like it after it's got a little more paint on it because it it's just actually helps the uh, the pattern stand out a little more. When it was first new and I put it on, um, it wasn't getting much of a pattern. I was kind of probably spraying too hard for one. Um, you got to, when you're using these kind of um, stencils, I guess you'd call them, um, you want to you wanna be careful with your pressure because uh, it actually... It actually can spread under it and also with your heat a lot of times if you heat it up it shrinks it down and then next if you go to spray another coat or spray another color it sprays under it and covers up your stencil so um, I like this stuff um, with a little paint on it because um, it kind of thickens it up a little bit and then I double it too as like I say I double this up and that way it gives me a little more of a pattern and that way if it does under spray just a little bit it's not going to hurt nothing there's still a good pattern there so i already got this one primed up and uh i know some people have emailed me and said hey can you do some more complicated baits for us guys it's been painting a little bit and i am i've got some really cool designs i've been working on and stuff um and i got a bunch of a bunch of lures on the crusty cranks uh, site so um, if you if you're looking just buy lures um, you can check me out on Facebook I got a store up on there on Facebook and um, been selling pretty good and customers been seem to be really happy so uh, yeah um, check it out if you're if you're just into buying lures um, but you'd like to see how they're painted this is the place to be and you'll see how I paint my baits and you, if you like a pattern you can buy it alright um, so 
I'm using these clips to get this thing as tight as I can. That way I can keep down the keep down the underspray a little bit. And I'm gonna spray a little bit of, of black on it anyway, so um, at the top I'm not too worried about it, but I do like to get it as tight as I can. And I got a nice thick thick uh, stencil on here, so alright, so I'm going to show you, um, I'm using pearlized tangerine, pearl tangerine from Createx, and just we'll spray that on there first, get a nice texture on here, and this is a really simple bait, it's three colors, white, pearlized tangerine, and opaque black. Right. Turn my pressure down a little bit so I'm not blowing under it. And at the bottom, I don't even really care if I blow under it a little bit because I'm going to probably paint that solid tangerine anyway. So this gives it a little crackle effect. try to get a nice kind of deep orange on there so it's going to take a couple coats I do two again if you haven't Hit that subscribe button and you're interested in learning how to make lures i'm going to be doing carving lures i'm a i'm a wood carver as well so um, i'm going to show you some carved lures that i'm doing and if you're just into wood carving too you can check out my channel at bass wood carving doing some wood carving over there it's kind of my two hobbies um, that i really enjoy doing is making lures because i like to fish and also carving wood. So I'm gonna be putting up a bunch of a bunch of lures that I make on here and get a little bit more paint in there. Just so I can get that a little heavier. I'm gonna be putting up some lures on here that I'm gonna hand carve. And since I'm going to uh, only use one color on this, I can go ahead and heat set it after I get it nice and heavy. But when you're adding other colors, you want to be careful with the heat set just because of the like I said, it'll blow, it'll shrink your mesh or your fiber down, whatever you're using. And then um, it will also, uh, when you go to hit that next color on there, you're going to find out that it's uh, covering it up. So, all right. And don't, I don't worry about the bottom too much because I'm going to end up spraying a little orange underneath of it anyway just to cover up the white all right let's give that a little dry okay now we're gonna See what it looks like. Oh yeah. 
There we go. Got that little crackle pattern on there. I like it. Okay, I hit a little orange underneath, cover up this white, and bleed that in a little bit. Move it on the throat. If you haven't fished with orange, man, orange is a dime, dynamite color to bust some bass with. Especially right now, we're getting into the fall. This orange. I always like to do a little shading around the eyes, and I'll hit that again with a little black just to make those eyes pop out. Okay, and give it one more heat set, and we're gonna put the stencil on. Okay, so stenciling. All right, there's a bunch of different ways you can do some stenciling, and I'm gonna show you all these different ways um, in different videos, but I'm not gonna show you all of them today because I just have this one bait to paint. Um, and I'm gonna show you a few different methods. All right, this is cut from a cricket. Okay, so what it is, it's adhesive vinyl. All right, and I can peel this off. Once I cut it, I peel this off, and I have the positive part, and then I have the negative part. So I can use either one of these for stencils. Now today I'm gonna to use these just cause I wanna see how well they come out and let you see how sharp the the stripes look and everything this one produces pretty good stripes you just have to make sure you get it stuck down real good all right and also this ain't the right one but i also cut my stencils out on stencil film all right so i can cut these out on my cricut I have a Cricut maker, and um, I made up all kinds of different stencils. I have little packets of them, and I size them up. I scan the bait in, and then what I do is I size the, the stripes and stuff down to the size of the bait. All right, and then I got the little eye hole there that helps me line it up, and that way I get the stripes on in the same spot most of the time. All right, um, but I've never actually put the stripes on from the cut piece. I've used this before. Um, the negative piece because I can line that up again and uh, you, you have to cut two of them one for each side because you can't if you turn this around and use it on the other side it's not going to come out the same the stripes aren't going to come out the same so you if you're cutting them like these you have to cut two all right cut one side and then mirror it and cut the other side and usually when I cut them I'll cut a sheet of them just like this and it's probably kind of hard to see the cutouts on here um, but I'll cut a sheet of them and then that way I have positive stripes I have negative stripe template and I can just go ahead and take those and, and use them um, and you can reuse these a few times the negative ones and that's why I just stick them on a piece of acetate and that way I can always grab them when I'm when I'm needing to all right, but I wanted to see what these little stripes are gonna do, how the, how well they're gonna look once they get, uh, you know, laminated and or I'm sorry, epoxied in there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use these. I'm gonna put them on, put a couple stripes on just so you can see how I do it, and then I'm gonna uh, put them on both sides. I'm not gonna bore you with putting all the stripes on, um, but this gives me a little flexibility to get them, you know, positioned on there. Um, and I haven't done the stripes, the positive stripes yet, so I kind of want to see how that turns out once it's, like I said, once it's got the epoxy on it and everything. So, um, I take a little Zacto knife and tweezers, and we're going to put this bait on here. I'm going to put it on my rubber pad. If you've seen my videos before, you know I cut out these pads on uh, foam. It's just a mat foam floor floor mat you can get that at Hobby Lobby or I'm sorry like 
Walmart or or Sam's Club or something like that. So um, again, I want to make sure I got the right one. And we'll see. We're gonna do this one, and this is kind of the, the fire tiger pattern. Um, so I just get a little tip on there, take it off, position it where I want it. I'm really curious to see how these turn out. I think they're going to turn out really cool. And it's pretty easy to put them on there. And like I said, I can be flexible with them this way. I can put them on however I like. If I want to turn the pattern around or whatever. I need the tweezers on these longer ones. But it cuts out some really nice, some really nice stripes. Sometimes when you're new, like I know for me, the hardest part was getting the stencils to, to lay flat so I didn't get an overspray or an underspray actually on each one of them. And getting them in the exact same spot. So those are a little bit challenging to do. But with practice, you'll get better. I'm starting to get a little better with it. But I was really curious as to how good these, these cut stripes would work out. So, I mean, I have used this final material before on other things. Signage and stuff like that. And I was like, I've seen somebody else do it. And I thought, man, I want to see how that looks on my baits. Um, and I think it's going to look pretty cool. Because you won't be able, once the epoxy's on there, you won't be able to see them as well. Stand out. I think, I mean, it'll, they'll stand out, but you won't be able to uh, tell it's vinyl on there, I don't think. That's kind of my question, is to see if you can really tell the difference. And it gives me a little bit of flexibility to fit this on the bait. It's looking pretty good, actually. Get this last one on here. And like I said, I won't bore you with putting the other side on. I'll do that off camera and then we'll put the black eyes on. Okay, so there's my stripes. Press them down real good, make sure they're on there. Also make sure that your bait's dry when you put these on there. Okay, all right, let me uh, put the other side on and I'll bring you back. Okay, so Got both sides on. That's definitely a little slower process than spraying them. But, um, you know, if you just say you only have black to put on there and you don't want to dirty up an airbrush, it's a good way. Um, you can also get transfer tape, it's called, that you, um, you actually put the tape on and pulls the, it pulls the, uh, pulls the stripes off of the paper. And then you can lay that whole thing down in one piece and then you just rub it and it comes off it sticks to the it sticks to it but um i didn't have any transfer tape so i just wanted to do it this way anyway because i think i could position them kind of exactly where i wanted them all right so last thing we got to do spray a little black shadow on the eyes and um and we'll put some epoxy and or actually we'll put some eyes and then we'll put some epoxy on this dude and uh, finish it up pretty simple paint job and you get a little experience with using the glitter foil um, like I said I got a bunch of different harder videos coming up so um, stay tuned to the channel make sure you subscribe because um, we're gonna do we're gonna definitely do some harder bait patterns that I've done and um, 
I kind of wanted all the first videos to be for beginners so that, you know, if somebody's starting out and they want to learn some easy paint patterns and, and see a lot of time. I got a lot of colors here, a lot of colors. So in order to see what, um, you know, all my colors look like on a bait, that's why I'm making single color, double color baits because I don't even know myself what all my colors are going to look like. Um, so it helps me kind of see what my uh, colors actually look like. So I'm going to put a little shadow on here, but I got to get, get that cleaner out. It was down in there. Okay, let's hit the scoot. Yeah, I just want a little shadow. Just to bring that eyeball out a little bit. And then I'm going to do a little bit on the tip of the nose. Just kind of let it fall back on that little bit. Yeah, he looks like a nice mean. He looks like a nice mean guy. All right. So that's all we're going to do with this one. I got a little water. So they match. That's all we're going to do with this one. Um, so we're going to put some uh, eyeballs on here. And... Uh, Get some epoxy on, see how these stripes look when they get epoxy. Okay, we're going with some we're going with some crazy contrasting eyes on this guy. I really like to make my eyes contrasting to the colors. I think it just kind of makes the the bait look a little more cool and uh, probably affects the action of the the bite too because a lot of times um, fish go after the eyes go after the head so I'm going to use these little little dragon eyes little green dragon eyes uh, I think it's going to look pretty cool let's go straight up and down Makes it look mean. And a little burnisher tool, push it down in there. Look at that. That looks badass. All right, let's do the other side. If you haven't cut any of these mats, I guarantee you, you're gonna enjoy when you're putting eyes and when you're putting stencils and stuff on I always freak out about scratching them I gotta get some new glue this glue's getting a little stringy I always worry about scratching them when you get to the final final point and then end up scratching them So these little mats really help out a lot just to, and they're easy to cut out you just lay your bait down on there and just take a little exacto knife and cut it out cut out around it clean it out a little bit so it sits down in there look at that guys now that's a, a wicked looking bait right there Sweet, I love, love it, love it. Turned out really nice. I've painted a couple of these, but I've never put the green eye on. I think this is gonna be a, a game changer right here. Look at that, it's almost like a Halloween one. Mean looking little dude. I'll throw this up on the website. I'm sure somebody's gonna buy this. All right, let me get the epoxy on. I'll bring you back when we're all done with the epoxy. All right, we got it. we're back. Got the epoxy on there, looking good. Love them dragon eyes. 
on that face it kind of looks like it's got a dragon mask on it's pretty cool the stripes worked out really good epoxied in there real well looking really sharp um, hope you guys will stay tuned to the channel we got a bunch of stuff coming up if you uh, are into wood carving check out my channel basswood carving on YouTube as well and um, this lure here I'm gonna send out to one of my my very first subscriber Kyle this one will be coming at your door I appreciate your support and uh, for sharing the channel and watching the videos and making comments I really appreciate it and uh, I'm gonna send this lure to you this this is uh, handmade by Krusty Cranks so guys uh, hit that like button subscribe if you haven't yet and uh, if you like fishing you like making lures we're gonna get into some soft plastics and doing some lures from rubber baits and messing around with different stuff in that and I appreciate you guys support channels growing starting to grow and I know the more videos I put up the faster we'll get bigger so stay tuned We've got a lot coming up and uh, stay crusty my friends Thank you.